Hey everybody, this is Daniel, welcome back. We need to talk about the racism that we're seeing in Europe and in Ukraine in regards to the Russian and Ukrainian conflict. These people left without taking the blacks, man. None of the blacks, man. been a lot of segregation and racism. It seems that there's a hierarchy of Ukrainians first, Indians second, Africans last. But as much as my heart goes out to Ukrainian people, I'm really concerned and uh, disappointed and frustrated by the racism I'm seeing from some of the Ukrainian people. And of course, this is a war that they're in the middle in. There's a military conflict. So we're not gonna generalize unfairly but we've got video of the Ukrainian people blocking Africans from being able to leave their home. We've got footage of uh, them trying to get uh, Africans, like a gentleman from the Congo, f to fight for the Ukrainian people, which is, I mean, in a sense, just absolutely maddening and ridiculous. The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees is now confirming to us that there are cases of discrimination in admitting refugees. One Congo native saying he was discriminated against while trying to board a train out of Ukraine. Take a listen. They even told us, like, we are going to give you guns and you're going to fight for Ukraine. I said, hi, we're going to fight for Ukraine. We are not Ukrainian. We are black. So how can we fight? How can we fight for Ukraine? And then we've also got footage of how the mainstream media and global media is talking about Ukraine in stark contrast and difference compared to the way that they talk about um, Iran, Syria, Afghanistan, Yemen. Uh, African countries, you name it. Now the unthinkable has happened to them. And this is not a developing third world nation. This is Europe. But this isn't a place, with all due respect, um, you know, like Iraq or Afghanistan that has seen conflict raging for decades. You know, this is a relatively civilized, uh, relatively European, I have to choose those words carefully too, a uh, city where you wouldn't expect that or hope that it's going to happen. As you're talking to us, Matthew, we're playing in the latest pictures of some of the refugees trying to get on trains or trying to get out of Ukraine. And, and what's compelling is just looking at them, the way they're dressed. These are prosperous, I'm looking to use the expression, these are prosperous middle-class people. These are not obviously refugees trying to get away from areas in the Middle East that are still in a big state of war. These are not people trying to get away from areas in North Africa. They look like any European family that you would live next door to. These are not refugees from Syria. These are refugees from uh, neighboring Ukraine. I mean, that, quite frankly, is part of it. These are um, Christians, they're white. It's really emotional for me because I see European people with blue eyes and blonde hair being killed, children being killed every day with Putin's missiles. When they say, oh, civilized cities and in another clip, well-dressed people and this is not the third world, they really mean white people, don't they? I think it's important that we talk about this because this isn't right. And I know these folks are in the middle of war, uh, circumstances I've never been in. I won't even pretend to have been in these circumstances. But it's, a, it's really important to ask, why is there white supremacy coming out in these times? In time where you are concerned about your well-being, getting your family out, getting to a safe location, why is there also this latent white supremacy that pops out and rears its ugly head yet again? Why is there such a stark difference of treatment when it comes to African refugees, Arab refugees, Muslims, like brown people compared to white people? Why is the mainstream media talking so differently about Ukrainian refugees compared to African folks and Arab folks? Why is this happening? And we know the answer. The answer is global white supremacy.
That is the answer. It doesn't matter whether you like the answer. It doesn't matter if you feel good about the answer. The answer is the answer. It's global white supremacy. And I think this is how we need to frame this conversation because when these types of incidents happen, where you have discrimination happening against folks that's not happening to white people, the normal, very basic elementary response is, oh, this is so heartbreaking. This is terrible. This should not be happening. But saying that this shouldn't happen is not enough. Saying this shouldn't happen is not actually action. It's not doing anything. Simply saying, oh, this shouldn't happen. Yeah, you're right. I wish my life weren't like this. I wish the lives of African folks, of Arab folks, I, I wish y'all hadn't been this way when Syria folks were trying to take care of their families or when Iraqis were seeking refuge or when Haitians were seeking refuge or Mexicans or Central Americans or South Americans were seeking refuge. I wish y'all had been different, but you weren't different. And you didn't stand up for them the way you're standing up for Ukrainian refugees. I mean, think about this. You have SNL doing like a special like a presentation and giving platform to uh, Ukrainian mass choir, if I have it correct, so that they can pr uh, be on TV and bring further attention to this plight. You have people raising money, people giving money to Airbnb, people talking about the Ukrainian uh, conflict, uh, various uh, companies that are blocking uh, transactions as services in Russia in order to bring pressure on them from an economic standpoint uh, to, to force their hand to stop this invasion. You have all of this happening, all of this going on. Where was this for the Iraqi people? Where was this for Haiti? Where was this for Mexico? Where was this for Honduras, Guatemala? Like you go down the list, where was this for Syria? Where was this for Yemen? The, the, the people of Yemen have been struggling for years in large part because of the actions of Saudi Arabia and the United States. Where has everyone been for them? And not even where has everyone been, let's be clear in our language, white people, where have y'all been for them? Like this is an important question. White people need to ask themselves en masse, why do you care so much when they, when, when, when the victims look like you and why do you care so little when the people are darker than you? It's almost like the darker they are, the less people care, unless it's some special exception that people can find in their hearts to act on. But the question becomes, why don't you care when it comes to other people like there are countries that are waiving their refugee requirements and waiving their policies of taking jewelry for the Ukrainian people, which means that they were practicing those policies for other people. And I'm seeing people share uh, charity links and, and all of these things. And I just can't remember when you did this for other people because you didn't. And it's really heartbreaking because when one country invades another country and these people's lives are upended, the conversation should only be about those folks suffering. And it should only be about helping those folks. The conversation should not also be about how those folks, not all, but some are practicing white supremacist like a pure white supremacist form of racism in the middle of evacuation. So I wanted to talk about this because I don't see enough people talking about it. And I wanted there to be a discussion about the fact that even in the midst of this evacuation, this war, this military conflict, that where people are dying, where the Ukrainian people are fighting for their homes, they're fighting against Russia, Russian soldiers are dying. Not all Russians are on board with this. With all of this going on, you still have room and attention and energy that's available for white supremacist practices, both with some Ukrainian folks, with various countries and their uh, different quote unquote refugee policies. And also when it comes to the way the media covers them, ver Ukrainian people versus the way they've covered other countries that have people who are seeking refuge. 
it's disgusting. There's no other word for it. It's disgusting. And we're going to see who actually cares about this sort of thing and who, like with everything else, is just going to find an excuse to ignore it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.